Hi, in this presentation we're going to talk about a concept called abstract classes. This relates to object-oriented programming and it will help you understand the next assignment that we're going to do in this Java 2 class. First of all, what's an abstract class? So it is a class that we would call a generalization. So for instance, if you had an animal, that is a general term. A dog or a cat are more specific animals. So anything that is common to its subclasses becomes part of the superclass. I'll show you an example in a minute, but we'll take a look here at a person. So a person, if we had an application that was keeping track of all the people in a university, for example, you would have a class called person. No one actually gets to be a person, but they could be a student or they could be an employee. And you can see that the things common to both students and employees are listed inside of person. And the things that are specific to the student are listed in the student class. And so the abstract class is what we would call the top level of your UML. And the subclasses below are more concrete classes. So a superclass doesn't usually have a meaning. So as I mentioned earlier, an animal would be an abstract idea. A cat or a dog would be more concrete. And so we would have the, the same idea here, a reptile. Nobody actually gets to be a reptile, but we know what snakes look like and we know what alligators look like. So that's the abstract idea and the subclasses. So when you create a abstract UML, you would uh, list the title in italics, which shows that it's not actually a real class to be implemented, but it is something that is to be inherited. Here's what it looks like in Java. So we would use the word extends. So you notice here for the car. Car extends vehicle. Truck also extends vehicle. Both the car and the truck have the properties of vehicles, such as make, model, and tire count. But only the car gets to have a trunk, and only the truck gets to have a bed capacity. So the extends tells us that we're using a abstract class. So these two at the bottom are referred to as concrete classes. Here's some methods now. So if we were to think of the class vehicle and it had a method called move, you could see that they would be implemented in drastically different ways if we had a car versus an airplane. So if I were to create a class called car and I had to implement the method called move, I would make the tires roll. If I had an airplane and I needed to make him move, I would use the verb for fly or fly upwards. And so drastically different implementations, but they both fall under the category of move. So methods, when they're abstracted, become drastically different in their subclasses. Here's another example of something we'll see in this course. We'll have a method later called save data or a class called save data. And inside of, that, inside of that class, we have a method that says save all items, and then x is a list of items that we're going to save. In one way, we could implement save all data as a database object. And the, uh, the method called save all items would write that information to a SQL database. However, we might have a different class called file IO object. That also extends save data. And his interpretation of save all items is write everything to a text file. And so both of them implement save all items, but in drastically different ways. Here is another example of something that is generic called a transaction. And it has a method called compute value. Notice in the abstract class, there's no code that tells us how to compute value. However, down in the uh, concrete classes below, Compute value would have actual equations and numbers to work with. An interface is similar to an abstract class, but it's slightly different. An interface has uh, an abstract class, but no implementation whatsoever. We sometimes call it a contract or a design blueprint. So they can contain some variables, but hardly anything is coded in an interface. It's more of a, a, a map forward. For instance, here's an interface called Steerable. Let's say we're making a video game. And uh, if you wanted to make an interface called Steerable, this means that this object can be turned 
left, and it can be turned right. So a car would be a steerable object. So you can uh, extend these implementations by separating them in commas, and we'll see an example on the next slide. So if you are going to implement an interface, you must implement all of the methods that were defined in the interface. Here's another example, car. Car wants to implement two different interfaces, steerable and drivable. So we already saw earlier that steerable meant you can turn left and turn right. So it has to include that in the definition of car. What is drivable? Well, there might be other methods like accelerate and brake or something along those lines. So here's another rule. If a superclass implements an interface, its subclasses also must Im implement that interface. For instance, vehicle, it says here, implements steerable. That means the car is also steerable. That means the truck is also steerable. And they would have to have the methods inside of them called turn left and turn right. And so there's a quick overview of what interfaces are. In the next assignment, we're going to create a shop, a weapons store for a, a video game. We're going to have a interface called weapon, and then we'll have some concrete interfaces or implementations called bombs and guns. So we'll see you in the next video.